So I'm here in Chicago in the middle of winter and I'm freezing, but I'm super excited to try this restaurant that's from this Korean American chef and these two brothers who own the place that are half Polish, half Korean. Their mom's Korean, dad's Polish, they grew up here in Chicago and you have Polish dishes influenced by Korean flavors. I'm super excited to try it. There's a huge Polish community here. Yes, Chicago. so what I found out growing up in Chicago in the northwest side of the city is that we have the largest population of Polish people outside of Warsaw, Poland. The fusion here, it, it really does stem from kind of the ownership, you know. They had Polish sausages laying around, they had a jar of kimchi laying around. Why not have that act as sauerkraut and put on your Polish sausages, that's right, slather it, it on. Polish food, I mean, has sauerkraut, has Oh, absolutely. Fermented, I mean, that's, that seems to be like a big tie. Like, what are the similarities that you see between I mean, Polish the similarities, food? again, like it's, you know, it's all about kind of like the slowly rotting food that's delicious, you know? The foundation is still there. The dumplings, uh, the kimchi, the sauerkraut, the rice, the starches, these things are, you know, dominant in both cultures. And the crossover is, it's, it's, it's almost perfect, like, like when you think of sour cream, it's a little acidic, has a tart flavor. You introduce really umami sesame, toasted sesame seed oil to it, it, it rounds it out. Maria's standard. Yeah. What, this is like your signature dish. Yeah, so that's basically what started this, uh, started this whole thing, honestly, the, the, with the food and the concept of the Korean Polish. Kielbasa kimchi, exactly, you know. And so how did you like elevate that very simple idea though? So basically, did a lot of R&D, ate a lot of Polish sausages. And then the, the kraut, the, the krauchi is what we call it. And we use all the traditional kimchi ingredients into this uh, traditional red totally cabbage. Totally different than Napa cabbage. Totally different than OG Korean yeah. cabbage. That's our own creation hybrid right there. And then our mustard, we use soju to steep the mustard seeds. Oh, wow. Who, what does your client tell yeah, I mean, you? It's, it's, it's really been varied. Like I can't really. It's really hard to pinpoint this neighborhood. We have strictly Korean, 100% Korean people come in, expecting the Korean experience. And we've had I've sat Polish families here looking for that 100% Polish. I'm like, look again. Look at this. <laughs> this has nothing to do with Poland. Um, so like, but they like it. Yeah, I, you know I. I think so. I mean, <laughs> it's meant to be fun. It's meant to be relaxed and casual. Like we're not, at the end of the day, the most important thing is that do we make good food? What's really different is that you smell immediately a lot of herbs and the herbs are like dill and just dill basically. And that's really strange for me because that is not a part of Korean food. Maria Standard? Mm. That's really good. I mean, this is just a really, really nice version of a Polish Polish dog. They're not like a Chicago-style hot dog, which I like. This one is more just about the kielbasa itself. I just want to like have the the real fusion here, right? Because you have the krauchi and the soju mustard. I'm gonna just go for that. It's really good. That soju really comes through when you just have the mustard. I think this just. I need my own side of mustard to put over this. And um, I love how you get that, that, that hit of booziness. That's very, you know, it's not really typical of, of mustard. Mm. So I've had Korean style poutine before, but this, I mean, oh, this never gets old. Oh, but I've, I have not had it with this kimchi gravy and freaking bulgogi in here. I mean, how can that be bad? It's so fantastic. Kimchi, the gravy, it, I mean, it's, it's rich. It legitimately feels like you're eating something Korean. And then you get the bulgogi, which is sweet and tender uh, and beefy. This is a fantastic trunk food. Now, the chef was talking about how gravy is the sort of condiment, the, the, the common condiment that you would see in a lot of Polish foods, and yet they've added kimchi, which is like it makes a lot of sense to me because gravy is, is awesome, but it kind of one-noted, right? It's just fatty and, and savory. But when you add the kimchi, it adds a little more umami flavor, adds uh, depth, it, it, it balances it in a really smart way. Malort? Malort? Oh, God, we are in Chicago. Chicago. Uh, 
It's actually not that. I mean, it's super weird. Malort is one of the most bizarre boozes on earth. <laughs> I'm gonna try this duck bokski, which is very hard to say, but is kind of an evil dish to me because duck bokki is a fantastic, just comfort food. So I'm gonna go for this. Let's get one thing clear, is that this is not duck bokki. <laughs> In the way that you would expect, because duck bokki is usually boiled. So the, the rice cakes are very soft and chewy. They're almost like um, well-cooked pasta. Um, when he takes this and he deep fries it, then the chewiness of the, the rice cake just goes up to next level. But the texture of this deep fried rice cake is like nothing that I've had in Korean food. I don't know whether I like this or not, but it's pretty evil in the, in the idea of it uh, and, and the execution. This is the uh, scallion potato pancake. And you know, Koreans have a potato pancake, kamjajeon. But then at the same time, he actually grates the potato in here to give it that kind of latka feel that you, you would see in a lot of Eastern European cuisines. And um, he's taken pork belly, strewn it across the top, and this more of this crouchy on here. So definitely a very, you know, conceivable fusion of Polish and Korean stuff. Mm. I actually think this might be the most clever of the dishes that he's made in a really subtle way because the texture of the grated potato really, I mean, it reminds me of latka. And yet, something residual from the crouchy that feels like I'm having a Korean dish. There's something about the balance of how Polish it is and yet how Korean it is that's super cool. It's nice, I mean, this crouchy is so good. It's so different than Korean kimchi because Korean kimchi is just, um, how do we say, it's got this kind of lower punch uh, and I think the the sauerkraut is a little brighter. Uh, it's a little um, fresher to me. And I don't know if that's just because the cabbage leaves are a little bit thinner, they're thinly shaved. Whereas a lot of times kimchi, you know, with the Napa cabbage, you have that nice chunk of the white, the white cabbage that um, holds up. Mm. There's no Korean dishes here. Uh, and yet, this chef is really smart about incorporating Korean ingredients and cooking techniques into this very familiar kind of bar-friendly food. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more of K-Town in Chicago, click right here.